Now that is a thing of beauty. So today's the day. The telescope has arrived and I'm gonna unbox it right now. In this box is a carbon fiber Ritchie Crichton telescope from TPO, which is the house brand of the OPT telescope store, Oceanside Photo and Telescope. So using my trusty X-Acto knife, And it is double boxed. Let's get this inner box out of the outer box. With the outer box removed, we have the inner box opened up. We've got the packing styrofoam and some of the extension rings that are necessary for the focuser. Uh, you need a generous amount of back focus because the focal plane actually is outside of the, uh, quite a bit outside of the telescope. This is a heavy duty back focus extension tube. I mean, it is probably a quarter inch thick. So this is gonna support a massive amount of weight and the ring itself won't flex. You might get flexing at the joints, but the ring itself is going to solidly hold whatever it is that you put on the back of it and hold it there. And this one is actually two separate rings and those those unscrew very nicely. There's no machine snagging. The threads are very clean. There's a lot of thread. There you go. There's the ring. Nice anodized black aluminum, heavy duty. This feels almost um, as high quality machining and um, heavy gauge aluminum as uh, my Stellar View, which is very nice uh, considering that TPO is the house brand. It's, uh, it's a good way to save a couple of hundred bucks on a telescope. And so that's the total back focus extension tube that's gonna go on the back of the RC. Telescope, tubes, focuser. That is a thing of beauty. Carbon fiber, Richie Crichton. So from this angle, you can see the carbon fiber, which has that nice, I think this is a twill weave. It's got a little bit of uh, epoxy on the outside that gives it a smooth feel, but you can still feel some of that weave in there. Let's talk about this focuser. This focuser has a locking ring right here, and it is buttery smooth to move. And lock it down and this moves but I mean I gotta I gotta kind of torque on it the focuser here slides very smoothly I don't feel the shaft inside is warped I can lock that in and raise that up and that raises really nice that's friction that's not geared that is a friction plate not a whole lot of travel, maybe about three to four inches. The dual speed is very smooth. I had a feather touch at one point. This is close and it doesn't feel like there's any backlash in that. If I can make this motorized, this is gonna be great. People tell me that the stock focuses are crap and this, this almost feels as good as my Stellar View focuser and I don't really particularly like my Stellar View focuser. So it's got a brass locking ring with two, two knobs for compression. So this knob locks your friction fit focuser so it can move in and out. And this is your brake. So you can move it in and out, just tighten that down, and it still spins but doesn't move. And if you undo this and this, it doesn't move but you can physically move it up and down, but it's it's snug enough, it doesn't fall back in under its own weight. Now, if I put a camera on here, it doesn't take much additional weight to get that to go down. All right, let's go to the business end of this. So the dust cover is snug, but it pops out. Okay, so it's got four pieces of felt. One, two, three, four. 
they are almost 90 degrees apart. They're not put in there, you know, precisely. It's obviously done by hand, uh, but it's snug. But it, it, once you can kind of get a hold of it and pop it out, it pops right out. Let's take a look at the inside there. So I used to have a Schmidt Cassegrain, and I do remember that it had a secondary mirror that I thought at the time was pretty big. This mirror is definitely bigger. So this is, feels like plastic. It smells like spray paint. So they probably spray painted the plastic and then put it in. But the baffling goes all the way back. <clears throat> the TPO comes with a Vixen rail on the top, which is nice if I wanted to get a guide scope at some point. This is a little bit longer focal length that I'm used to imaging with. So I can put a guide scope up here, small little auto guider package, maybe here on the back or here on the front, depending on what the field of view is like. And I could auto guide with it. So it'd be interesting to learn auto guiding. I'll probably have to check with uh, Chuck and uh, get some pointers from him because he does auto guiding uh, with all of his longer focal length telescopes and he does a great job uh, with all of his images. So I got a feeling he knows PhD better than uh, anybody I would trust. The main selling point of this is, for me at least, it has the D plate on the bottom, which is what my Paramount wants. So I've got my D plate ready to go. It is not drilled for additional accessory holes here. So I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to swap this plate out for one of my other Los Mandy spare plates so I can put some of the uh, the system on a scope equipment on here. Um, you know, autofocus control box, uh, the rig runner, a dew heater, um, and uh, or dew control box so I can put a dew heater around the back of it to keep the back of the tube warm to stop dew from forming on the primary back here. Let me go see if it fits. Damn, the holes are just not right. And the weird thing is, the Lowe's Mandy plate walls, either my Lowe's Mandy plate's off, or their radius blocks are. Super lube. It's like Frank's Red Hot. I put this shit on everything. Why the hell would I be lubricating the threads of these bolts? Well, the answer is simple. If you put enough torque on them, they aren't gonna go anywhere, but if you ever need to remove them, they won't seize. All right, so far the only thing that I can complain about this after uh, receiving it is that uh, my Lowe's Mandy dovetail does not fit the radius blocks. And honestly, that's not really the worst thing in the world. Um, I can find some other way to get what I need on here. Um, maybe, maybe it involves putting the Lowe's Mandy on the Vixen rail instead, or finding a way to attach it up here off of these little radius blocks instead. But I'll worry about that a little later. I know I can mount this to it because they've got center holes here that will go into these center channels. It is a little bit of extra weight to have on the top, but it does let me carry everything on the OTA that I wanna carry and not have cables dangling down. At a longer focal length, I really need to make sure that balance and cable drag is eliminated if I'm gonna do unguided imaging with the Paramount. So now we're gonna visit the focuser again. And this time we're gonna take it off. Those threads are a little on the rough side. Again, tiny bit of super lube. So this is just a tiny insurance policy to make sure when the day comes that I need to remove this with a strap wrench or something, it'll be reasonably simple to do. Yeah, that's snug, but it doesn't feel like it's seized. Okay, I'm gonna put the big ring in the back, because I'm pretty sure that's a guarantee. 
later on that this big ring does need to come off and it is difficult. It's more surface area for a strap wrench to grab. Another thing that you may want to be careful of is actually running your hands across these back threads. They feel really sharp. And there we have it. That loosens. This rotates. Lock it in with a quarter turn. Lock that down, folks, so it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, that's, that's easy peasy. Okay, the only thing I would have to actually end up removing is the finder bracket, because I don't use a finder scope. That is a carbon fiber Ritchie Crichton telescope. I gotta say, I don't know how this is gonna turn out on video, but that carbon fiber is, it's just killer in person. 